Hello, this is National Master Spencer Feingold back at the Chess Club and Scholastic Center of Atlanta. Back with some end games, Tuesday end game lecture. We're going to continue with king and pawn end games. In fact, last time we ended with a king and pawn end game from the great Siegbert Tarash. And we'll continue with two Tarash games, followed by two Nimzovich games for a total of three games. Because Nimzovich will play Tarash in one game. I was wondering. I was yeah. Confused. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's a trick. I'm going to trick you a lot, so get ready. <laughs> so here's the first game Chagorin against Tarash from 1905. Chagorin uh, has uh, white here, yes, against Tarash. And it's black's move. Tarash goes for. Well, let's flip it so we have Tarash's view, huh? That's, that's what was confusing me there. Ah, that's better. Tarash goes for king c5. King c3. Obviously, frankly. And then e4 passed pawn. Not the only move, but the best try for a win. It's uh, forcing white to play only one move to not lose. F5. F5. Really good suggestion, right? Avoiding a potentially protected passed pawn for black to play f5. Absolutely correct. It also won't get zugzwanged, which is another key point. If white plays f5, he's definitely not getting zugzwanged. There's no way. He's got all these pawns to move. Or he could get zugzwanged in some other scenarios, like imagine he plays g5, takes, takes. You could imagine white getting zugzwang somehow. You know, like if you play, for example, g4. Just calculating it a bit. But g5, f5 probably would be interesting still. <laughs> yeah. But okay, f5, definitely the most logical move, instantly said by one of the many members of this audience, which there actually are many members. <laughs> Usually I'm just, there's nobody here and I say that. But all right, so f5. And uh, Tarash is like, well, there's no point in playing like with my g or h pawns. Let's go for e3. King d3. e2. Takes, takes. And they agreed to a draw. Just kidding. <laughs> Obviously. Black is a little bit better here. I mean, his king's better. And the f-pawn on f5 is a little weak. It's a little overextended. Let's continue a bit more. King e3. King d5. King f4. Pretty easy to explain moves here. King d4. g4, fine. King d5, Tarash really earning this win by shuffling his king back and forth. Now, I'm not a fan of Chagorin's next move, although it doesn't lose. I would definitely regard it as dubious. And I remember reading a great book by the late international master, Dvoretsky. And he, in his endgame manual, talked about how in king and pawn endgames, moves aren't dubious. They either draw or they don't draw. That's it. I disagree. You know, he's better than me, but I disagree. Like, you could play a move that makes it very difficult to draw. That's dubious. If you have other options that aren't so difficult to draw. So if white is trying to not win, which he shouldn't try to win, like I said, his king is worse and is a little overextended, what would be the normal move that white would play? Yeah, pretty tough. So you'd think that they would just agree to a draw already, right? Come on. Mm -hmm. King and three each. Oh, no pass pawns. See, I don't think h4 is bad because Ginger GM likes to play h4 and he's bad at the end game. So that was my, that's, that was my logic. See, it's so easy for you 
when you live in the Ginger GM era. Yeah. Chigorin had no concept of Simon Williams. Yeah. So that's why he played H4. Right. Exactly. But all he has to do is back his king up, and there's no way to proceed. Yeah, it looks pretty drawn to move your king around. All right. Yeah. He played H4, not losing, but he could lose. After king f3, what's the plan? There. 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 I tried it a little, right? You don't even have to play h3. You could play king f3 there, actually, but... Well, anyways, h3 is the obvious move. Then what are you going to do? h4? You could play king f3 because of the stalemate trick with king h5. You know, you're really ruining it for later. Oh, uh, okay, sorry. Yeah, come on. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I didn't say that. Yeah. But anyways, h4, and... Uh, yeah, I couldn't do anything here, right? King f3, so what? King f4, come on. There's no way forward. So, he didn't have to play h4 like he did. But again, it's not losing. After uh, king d4. Tarash really earning this win. King d4, king d5, king d4. Always repeat, exactly. Always repeat. And now what should white do? It's actually a little tougher now. Yeah, now I know what to do because I ruined it. Right. <laughs> it's the only way. Yeah, it might actually. help one person on the video watching at home, but it won't help the people here. So that's good. Yes. Yeah. So let's say he does the same thing that I said he should have done before. King f3. Mm -hmm. He played g5. King e5. King e3, only move. But how is he supposed to handle the same move I suggested in the other variation? Only one move, really, right? What is it? Oh, G takes it. Um, H. Oh, no? Oh. 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 Oh, what would you mean? Oh, because of the hostel. Well, G, H, you'll take his pawn. Is that, do you think that's good? Oh, that's right. Yeah. You don't, like, don't worry about stalemate. You don't just, what would you do? You know, you don't have to think about what what is going to happen, it's just, there's only one reasonable move. You don't want to let him play hg, do you? No, so maybe king, king g3? Yeah, king g3. Uh, uh, f3. Oh, you're right, f3. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. <clears throat> king f3. Yeah, you can get in there. I'll take it, and now I'll win with king e4. Looks like I got you. Haha. -ha. Except. Let's see if I have H5 or H5. Who say it louder? Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, speak up. <laughs> this room's really big, so there's like a lot of chairs. Speak loud. You can tell. You can tell. Yeah. Uh, uh, if the white king goes to h5 and then the black king takes on f5 it would be a stalemate absolutely this is the only way to not lose king h5 double x clam and draws in fact you probably should take on f5 because king g6 is kind of scary yeah that wins yeah so you gotta take really <clears throat> you can't like fool around too much Really good. So I think that Chigorin, maybe he even saw that but thought he could try something here. I don't know. You know, I don't know. But he didn't go for king f3. He played g5. Which, um... King d5.
Now, I haven't analyzed this fully. Mm -hmm. Five looks like everything beats it. I'm confused. Like H6 wins, H5 wins, King D5 wins. What kind of move is that? Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't every move beat it? Oh, maybe if you play H6 or H5, you can take and play King G4, King H5, and draw. Still. Yeah, okay. Still, still. So only King D5 wins, maybe. Yeah. I actually think even this isn't winning. Wow. Because GF was the blunder. Mm -hmm. What was the move? I didn't put it. I forgot. Hmm. You can't go for stalemate, though, anymore. Probably it would be H5, but then I'm afraid of H6. And rightfully so. <clears throat> oh, can you play G6? And then after h6, king h5, but maybe h5 wins. Uh, king g4? Yeah, I mean, after g, g Yeah, g6. h5 wins. h5 immediately. Yeah. So yeah, maybe it is a win. Oh, oh, king g4, king e5, g6. Then g6. Then to stop h5. Then h5, king h5, right, 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 right. The That's the right order, right? Yeah, yes, yes. No, I, I, I did look at that, too. I just I couldn't remember. It's hard too. to remember. So. Yeah, king g4. That's the x clam move. Mm-hmm. Because we want to play g6, but h5 would stop that. <clears throat> now we can play g6, and it's the same situation. Same stalemate, exactly. And there's a lot of stalemates there. Yeah, you could try king f4 or something. <laughs> so yeah, even here it's okay, but <clears throat> g5 is totally a logical move, as is h4. Why would you do that when you could do nothing? It almost seems like he was trying to win, but... Uh, that's a little bit ambitious, <laughs> but he's worse in this endgame. That's totally symmetrical, and he's worse. It's like, what? Trying to win it? This was a good move, though. <laughs> King f4. Yeah, Tarash was pretty good. King f4. Super precise. Not necessary at all. He could have taken the pawn. Or even h5, actually. But I like it. You know, it shows your opponent what's what. So instead of king h3, let's analyze king h5. All right. I'll take it. King h6. And I'll go to g4. King h7. Push it. King g6. Ah, king g I didn't see king g6. I was yeah. like, what are you going to do after that? Yeah. No, I'll win. Okay, you I can't picture all that. I'll queen and you'll queen, right? And then we agree to draw. Yeah, you're right. I thought I could check and check. Can you show some of that? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. We're talking about if he goes here, there, and here. Okay. This one takes. Mm -hmm. Now, if I take, you'll play king g6. So I have to go here. Oh, no, no. Boom, watch you oh, say. Oh, that's a good move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Nailed that's it. That's a good move. Wow. Yes, yes. Man, right. if my opponent played that I knew when I saw that one, that was the right move. <laughs> black will win, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Seven. Yeah, black's going to win. And those yeah. guys saw that except for white. Right. Wow. Well, he probably would have done it. He might have. Seen it. He he but what the King H3 is like, are you kidding me? Yeah. King H3. Uh, yeah, King F4 is kind of similar to King H5 there. Yeah, King H5 was good. Yeah, really nice. So Tarash got Chagorin there, although Chagorin just sort of threw it. But really accurate play by Tarash to have any chance to win, like, the most drawn-looking position ever. So you always got to pay attention at the end, you know. Might look like a draw, but next thing you know, you have to resign because your opponent plays King H5 X clamp. All right, let's go on to the next one. Is it F11? Never save. Ah, uh, yes, this is a nice one. Nimzovich against Tarash. Mortal enemies. Is Nimzovich white? Yeah. Nimzovich has white against Tarash. It's black to play. Tarash plays a great move. Really good move. Any suggestions for black?
Is it King E7? No. What is the point? So at least uh, it's not come under the rook. Yeah. Did you mean King E6? Yeah. Don't kind of right. attack there. Uh. Good candidate move. Looks pretty reasonable. This reminds me <coughs> of Karen's game in the World Open. I see you're giving her a hint now. I don't know. Because, no, because, <laughs> it's not fair. Because, like, sh this was the exchange up where they agreed to a draw, and she was like, I don't know if I'm winning. Then there was, like, a maid well, was with the king trapped on the side. That's why it reminds me. Well, I was, I was thinking the rook should come around and check because of that game. Like, uh, look at eight. Yeah. The girl. And they come over. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking yeah, of eight, sweet. too. I don't know the answer, but you're right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, right? <laughs> then you come around and chase the king. Yeah, then you get my grandmaster title in the mail. Might even get yeah. that deep pawn somehow. Right, when you play rook b8, you're threatening rook h8, mate, which is annoying. That's what he did, yeah. Yeah. That's a really good move for those guys. A long time ago. It's not winning, though. Wow. There is a defense. Nims uh, yeah, Nimsovich missed it. Hold on. Wow, still made again. Wow. I assume I'm right. I didn't uh, find a stalemate based variation. I did. Yeah, White's turn. If it was Black's turn, Rick H8 mate. So right? King, King will come to H7, right? That's an idea. Yeah. That's got to be one yeah, of the moves. You got to play yeah. King H7 or King H5. King H7 so that's the question. The yeah. King H5. Which King move? Exactly. Yeah, let me look at this yeah. some more. There, there. Carry the one. Huh. Yeah, to me they both draw, so i got to figure out what I'm doing wrong here. No, it's <clears throat> very difficult, actually. That why one of them doesn't draw. Extremely difficult to understand. But Tarash was no joke. You know, you might think Tarash he played in 1911. Oh, it's not, <laughs> it's, it's not a stalemate because instead of stalemating by queen, you just move your king and then you queen and you win. That's why King H7 loses. To the variation I was thinking about. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Well, everything I'm looking at, I can't. Have I was well, why don't you tell me what you're looking at? Well, I was looking at rook h8. Mate? Well, it's not my, okay, next, it was twice around. I was like king h5, mm -hmm. and then rook h8, and then they go king g4. See, and your fatal mistake here in your analysis. You, you forgot, forgot the, the end game. Lecture. Yeah, what kind of end game what, are What's these? the title of the lecture? I missed the beginning of the uh, lecture. Well, look at this like right here, KP. Oh, so we, that's what we I'm saying. Yeah, we can't see that. Oh, really? I think you can. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, if you paid me, I could. If you play king h5, he's going to play rook b5. Uh -huh. He's going to uh -huh. trade into the king and pawn endgame and win with the passed pawn. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, well, I was thinking trading a different way, but yeah, that because that one's fine. Well, otherwise, you can't force the trade, <clears throat> really. Yeah, you can't really force it. Down. Yeah. But rook b5, that's force in the trade if yeah, he plays king h5. In fact, after either move, it's rook b5. Mm -hmm. King h7 or king h5, rook b5 forces the trade. Even after king h7, rook b5, you have to trade because it's like mate town yeah. if you don't trade. See what I'm saying back there? Yeah. So let's just see why one doesn't work. King h5 as was played. Wow, I concluded King H5 drew King H7 lost. Wow. <laughs> I'm the worst. Maybe you did get your GM title in the Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> King and pawn in games are tough. Uh, okay, so King G4, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. Only move. Uh huh. Only move. Only move? Yep. Oh. Yep. <laughs> I knew he'd like this one. But black is winning. Yeah, black's winning. Black's but winning. Yeah. But there's one move, exactly. Yeah, yeah. After this move, he resigned. <coughs> yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, what's the winning move? Yeah, there's only one way to win. <coughs> so, yeah. Brilliant move here. Yeah. So black to move, right? Yeah, black to move and win. He will catch the pawn, <coughs> but you shockingly have a way to win. Yeah. It's like crazy. I'm using this in my New York camp. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I'm right. stealing everything that ever happened. Okay. Yeah. Anish, what's the best move? Yeah, come on, Anish. 
is hard. Geary would have found it. Well, he would have offered a drunk. Right. <laughs> Shankler would have resigned. Yeah, they would have both the put their hands out. They right. worked different results on their score sheet. You can have it where it's one and half. Right. I noticed, and I just one, started doing Swiss this. Is this cool photo for black? Yeah, for black. Doing the 80s? Well, what would you suggest? You know, what do you think? What would you calculate here for black? Would you calculate anything? Or, or what? Reasonable move. Reasonable idea. I'll probably play like, I don't know, G4. Looks mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Why not? G3 should be sufficient. Yeah, it's protected past yes, pawn. Yes, that's sufficient. Okay. Yeah, that's the kind of the problem. If I have my pawn here, protecting this pawn, mm -hmm. it's a protected past pawn. Which means in the end game your king can't like go over and win or do anything because then I'll queen. So black's objective is to prevent white from protecting his h pawn. Yeah. You know, if you can't protect your h pawn, let's say you just run over and take my pawn, I go take your pawns, I'll probably win. Yeah. But if you protect this, if your guy's here, I can't go up and take your pawn because then you'll queen this one. There's just no way I could win then. So he has to, has to, if he wants to win, has to prevent the pawns from being defended. So how could black prevent g3? It's the only one move to stop g3 right now. Yes? A4. That stops g3? It does. Well, yeah, yeah that's g3, true. A3. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very time for Oh, yeah, I forgot about it, actually. Very time for it. Yeah, all right, so A4, king, D3. Karen's pretty confident over here. Oh, I wasn't real confident. Yeah. Well, I was thinking if you say F4 check, then the king has to step away from being able to stop the A pawn from queening. Why doesn't he just go towards A pawn? Oh. Um, F5 check is a good suggestion, but I'll go towards A pawn for sure. Yeah. So, you know, one of these ways. Then what are you going to do? Well, but then if you push the pawn, then they can no longer What, push A4? The pawns. No, like F4. <laughs> F4, hey. exactly. Yeah. F4. Hey, That's the way to, to do it. You were trying to act like that was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told you I was trying to trick you. Whenever the student says push the pawn, the you, you know, never you know. Gotta, you gotta say the chess All right. Yeah, come on. You, gotta, you got two pawns, you won't even tell me? You know? <laughs> you yes, F5X resigns. Yay. Resigns. Go you can't blame him. That's the problem with playing a4 first, by the way, is that this won't be check after I defend. So you can try this, but now I'm in time. Huh. Hooray. And then I'll draw. So you gotta play f5 check. X clam. Really good. And you're right, if you take the guy, then that's too easy. Yeah. You're not even in the square anymore. You guys know about the square. The square beyond compare. Yeah. You have to go there. No cheating. All right, I try. Show them the line after king d4, f4, and see what happens. What? Yeah. All right, yeah, just keep going. Yeah. I get you. you, know, you know, like this? On the internet, yeah. Yeah. Here. Visualize it. Visualize it. <laughs> if only white spawns could defend themselves. Or if white goes like there. Yeah, there you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but king e2 was sufficient. Yeah. King e3 drew too. Yeah, almost. Yeah, but two tempi, too okay. slow. Yeah. yeah, two yeah. tempi is like a mile in a king of pawning game. Though. Yeah. Really good. So now let's talk about the other move. Yeah, I thought that lost, so now I don't right. really draw it. Right, king h7. Uh -huh. Still rook b5. Oh. But actually, simple way to draw. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I totally didn't see how white draws here, but now I do. Yeah, let's this see if the, the audience would. This is the trick I was going to do. I was going to play g4. Yeah. GF, and then still make All right, all right, gotcha. But after king h8, h7, black plays king g6 instead of queening. That's oh, why yeah, yeah. That's why you don't well, win. Oh, okay. king g6 is illegal. Yo. No, what are you talking about, though, anyways? <laughs> you know, because yeah, so I'll G, have G4. time to... No, g4. I'll yeah, take G, it. gf. a5. h5. a4. g h6. a3. Yeah, king h8. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, you know how you win? You wait. Does that win? No, that doesn't win. Huh? 
Hey, can you show us all that? Hey, I didn't win. Well, we don't even know what it is yet. So yeah. how can I show you? Yeah. <laughs> how can I show yeah, I've already you? Lost, I feel. G4 right. takes, takes, push. See, he's going for this. This is what he's going for. Okay. Stalemate. Then I thought black could play King G6 in my head, which is illegal. All right. Oh, that's what you're saying. So, um, when you need the previous move, the, the black pawn can stay at a two and move the king to the other side. Yeah, that doesn't win. No, you know what might win? No, that doesn't win. Hmm. I think you gotta take it. That way, you can avoid the stain. Right, but then white's gonna queen. And then yeah. so it's harsh. Then Alright, if you, if you move your king away, he will queen king it. Upon you, right. not winning. Okay. Okay. King of Pawning is winning for white, actually. Yeah, it's winning for white. Because <laughs> the pawn's in the fifth. <laughs> it's possible this draws too, actually. It's possible this draws too, right? I don't see a win. Yeah. The win that I did see. But there's a clear draw just by like right. the most normal moves. Right. Yeah, I didn't see you that. Just take it, yeah, you just take it. You just take it by G4. Yeah. Pretty obviously a draw mm -hmm. now, actually. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's possible G4 draws there, but anybody would think this yeah, is. Yeah, so King H7 draws easily, King H5 loses, right. King H5. Man, the truth hurts. Yeah, really tough. Really tough. But Rook B8 was a great move to. Give him the only option. You know, he only has one option, and he he messed it up. It's very difficult. He probably just thought this was a draw too. Yeah, he didn't see F5. There's no way he saw F5. Yeah, he didn't see F5 he's just like draw, and then F5. Why must I lose to this idiot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Direct quote, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, he did say that. And I think it was against Tarash too, but probably not this game. What if it was this game? <laughs> That'd be really cool. Yeah, F5, really good. He just resigned. No, I'm not opinionated on the following matter, but you probably are. Who had a better career? Nimzovic or Tarash? Uh, I would probably say Nimzovic. I think he's more famous than Tarash, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he, it's for his books, you know. He had those great books. And, uh, yeah, he even has uh, his most famous loss against Tarash in those books. Mm. When Tarash sacks the bishops. I show that to all my students. Mm -hmm. A really famous game. Mm -hmm. I forgot the year, but... You know, you have enough information to Google it now if you're watching at home. But alright, let's go to the last one. I actually, I was I was so bummed because I showed this Tarash endgame uh, last week. And I had these two other great Tarash endgames. And I thought I wanted to show all the Tarash endgames at once. You know? But I already, I already lost one. You know, from the last one. So I found one where Nimzovic won in somewhat similar style to this, actually. At least uh, at parts. Let's go to it already. Nimsevich has black in this game against Stoltz. It's um, not Igor Stoltz. It was some other Stoltz. I don't know if Igor Stoltz was alive now. <laughs> well, probably not. I thought he was more of a 70s boy, Igor Stoltz, but I don't know. I don't know much about him, actually. But it was some other Stoltz. It started with a G. But still, Stoltz's a pretty good chess name, so he's probably not bad. And White, in this position, played a, an upsettingly bad move. Probably you could guess it because it's a king and pawn and exactly. game lecture. I, I, I guess it's the thing with the lecture. <laughs> Rook D2. Yeah. It's very stupid. Even if it draws, don't do that. Yeah. Don't trade into a, a horrible king and pawn endgame. Like, come on. I mean, maybe you, you think it's a draw because he's got the connected pass pawns. It's a very difficult win for black, although Nimzovich finds it, of course. That's why I'm showing it to you. Uh, but there's definitely better ways to go. So what other option would you give for white other than rook d2? So white to move? Yeah, white to move. Yeah, very upsetting to see Rook D2, honestly. Don't do that. 
It's like everything that my students do. They love to trade into a king and pawn in game and hope it's a draw. And they love to do it. Down a pawn, they'll do it. I mean, at least still it's equal material. He's got two connected pass pawns. Even this is a loss. So that just go, should go to show you. Still won't. My students will still trade it. I know they will. Any other suggestions? Not an only move here, really. But only uh, like one reasonable idea, I think. What do you think, Grandmaster? You play rook a3 and a8, although you only get to a7. Yeah. But, you know, you try Push to the a pawn. You could yeah. even play a5 first, right? Well, you could, but then black would play rook a7. My way, he will not. <laughs> if you see what I'm saying. Not exactly. So rook a2. What's and then a5, rook a2. After a5, rook b5. And then if rook a3, rook b7. Ah. But if you play rook a3, now you're not playing rook b7. You right, you'll do some other B8. thing. Yeah, yeah. But you got to play rook b8, so your rook's on a. All right, all right, that's true. It probably doesn't matter, but I, just, I, pre I prefer Yeah, but you got to just do that. Push your a pawn. you got to queen that a pawn. So I suggested rook a3, and then queen the a pawn. Right. Yeah. So then, what was all that other hoo-ha? Well, we were discussing whether to play rook a3 first or a5 first. Yeah, I was thinking about all that, but yeah. like, you guys were rattling off some other things. Well, I would, he was saying, if you play a5 first, I'll take it. Right. You'll play rook a3, but now I'll get my rook to a7, like this. So the white pawn isn't as far as um, is. I wanted the white pawn on a7, because that's closer. That right. Black, if you works. play rook a8, rook a3 a first, I mean, I get, black has to do some move. Yeah. Like king move, f4, yeah. whatever. And then you'll play, you know, let's say here, just for example. And then we'll do this. Now you have to go all the way back down. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I see. Even this stuff is, like, unclear. Mm -hmm. Possibly Stoltz was looking at these variations, thought it was losing for white. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to justify rook d2. Mm -hmm. All right, you know he took it. No whispering. It's rude. No, no, <laughs> no, I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> JK. I said, hey, no, he's I tough said, on his new boss. I said. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I said was people are going to be happy and asking questions. Yeah. I'm that's true. Go that's why Danny puts his quote unquote stepbrother quote unquote on the show. So they'll understand. No. All right. Anyway, go ahead. Well, now it's time to win, right? Black to play and win. It's too hard. It is too hard, yeah, right? <laughs> really? No. I thought you'd find it, but it's. Very difficult, indeed. I mean, my first idea is obviously f4, then king d6. Like, f4 takes king d6. That's my first idea. Hmm. Probably a5. After f4 takes king, f4, then a5 right away. Oh, good question. <laughs> I'll play king d6 anyway. Right, right. What's the difference then, yeah? So f4 takes king d6, a5. g3. a6. King c7. Dang, I can't even get him. I can't even get this guy. He's like rock solid, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You guys following this variation? I, right. I was wrong because you were like, what kind so, of move is that? Yeah, Cindy. Oh, you yeah, yeah, you're right. The, the F pawn, then, yeah. then the white pawn, right? you can make come right. Yeah, let me yeah. see. Um. And then king takes pawn, right, Karen? Yeah. <laughs> you got you <laughs> At least I can get somebody. <laughs> See, the thing is, white's going to queen his b-pawn also. Oh, that's yeah. right. So you, if you stop white from queening his b-pawn, that g-pawn looks pretty good for black. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. that's why he played king d6 only winning move. Mm -hmm. Boom shakalaka. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who yeah, cares about the f-pawn? Because after king d5, you can't stop the a-pawn. You have to True that. again. Horrible. Yes. Horrible. Yeah, you can't play king c6. Yeah. Exactly. Here, there. You can't go there. Yeah. Because he takes it. Oh, okay. So you have to play why. king d6 to get around town. Really good. And I tried to trick him one more time when we were analyzing, but he wouldn't fall for it. A5, G3, and then A6. And then you have to play. That's the way back. Yeah, I just played A6. Yeah, then uh, 
Is it on C7, King? Yeah, you gotta stop that pawn. King C7. King E2, trying his best, you know. Every move wins. Yeah. You know, <laughs> two winning moves <laughs> right. of the two reasonable moves to consider. They both also, win. I think King D6 wins. Although it might not. I think it does. I don't see why it wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, if it's White's turn, it's a win for Black, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, White to move, Black wins. Kind of funny. So right now, who has to do the... Black to move? Yeah, it's black to move. But so any move is fine. Any move is fine. You can give a check to the pawn. Uh, then, uh, then the other pawn can move forward if you capture or if you move the way forward. Yeah. yeah, and the guy played on for no reason. Yeah? Wow. What is he, Sam Savio? Right, I mean, Nimzovich just like resigned when the cool <laughs> move dropped. <laughs> He's like, oh, alright, well, that's enough of that. You know, that's how you know Nimzovich was classy. Mm -hmm. I, lo I love this technique, though, actually. He puts this queen here and just walks the king over this way. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> That's mean. Yeah, that is mean. Yeah. Because if you, like, the, he could theoretically draw this, like, if you take the pawns, yeah. and he gets his pawn down here, and, you know, you don't count too much, and then you get all that. That's a draw. Yeah. That's a textbook draw if it's a bishop pawn. Yeah. If it's a knight pawn or a center pawn, it's a win for the queen. But with a rook pawn or a bishop pawn on the seventh, that's a draw. So he uh, avoids that entirely. There's no way that anything's gonna happen here. He's got his king protecting and he's just gonna collect the pawns. So really good technique there by Nimsevich. King D G F4 takes King D6. Stoltz definitely didn't see that one. He thought just, you know, takes and then I'm queen in and you're queen in. And I queen with check. Yeah. yeah, he's probably like, I'm going to win. No, no, <laughs> I don't know if he thought that, really. But, yeah, king d6, really good. Really nice. And, yeah, Nimzovich learned from his uh, his loss. Unless this game was first, then. <laughs> and he didn't learn from it. But, uh, all right, that's all I have for you today. Yay. I hope you enjoyed this king and pawn and game lecture. If you did, make yes. sure you subscribe to the Chess Club and Scholastic Center of Atlanta's YouTube channel. Thanks. Thank you. See you next time. Thank Bye. You. Bye.